You're listening to Potty Mouth Radio, the home of movies, music, television, and comedy. The following podcast contains spoilers and rude words. We watch it. We watch it. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to We Watched a Thing with Billy and Dave. How you doing, mate? I'm good. We saw some movies. I mean, we of. we did, but how could you say you're good with the movies that we saw? <laughs> Don't be so negative. <laughs> every every movie is a work of love for somebody. <laughs> every sperm is sacred. <laughs> <laughs> and at least one of these movies is a big pile of jizz. <laughs> Well, all right, which one should we talk about first? We are doing uh, both the remake of The Crow, remake, reboot? I, I'm Honestly, I don't know what you'd call it, as well as Blumhouse, uh, quotation marks, afray-eyed. horror, afray-eyed. <laughs> which one should we chat first? Let's do afray-eyed first. All right, let's get into it. We've had Mithrigan, now we're doing afray-eyed. <laughs> So, A Frey Eyed is a 2024 American science fiction <laughs> horror film written and directed by Chris Weitz. That is, of course, afraid, stylized as a for AI. Because it's about AI. It's clever. Get it? Get it? As mentioned, it is uh, produced by Blumhouse Pictures. It stars John Cho, Catherine Waterston, Havana Rose Lou, Lukita Maxwell, David Dasmalchian and Keith Carradine. And what is it about, Dave? It is about the perils of AI, as so many films <laughs> recently have been. Uh, young family uh, headed up by um, uh, Mr. Milf, uh, <laughs> who's an ad exec uh, working for Keith Carradine, and they get approached by some obnoxiously hipster Silicon Valley wanker company yep. um, headed up by <laughs> um, David Tesmelke and ostensibly playing about a 20 year old <laughs> but the funniest fucking thing in this movie um, who have um, created a uh, kind of glorified um, Siri slash Alexa yeah but, yep. but but rather than being a, a personal assistant is actually I, I just turned my phone on then um, <laughs> um, so it's Fuckers listening to me, um, uh, but but he's actually uh, purportedly real AI rather than just, just being algorithms, a, yeah. assemblage of, of responses. Um, and he is um, instructed in no uncertain terms by his boss to take this thing home and come to you know run it through its paces so that they can then proceed to market this thing to the masses. And as always happens, <laughs> this pesky AI isn't as friendly as it appears to be, and shit goes shit goes awry in due yeah. course. Let's get straight into it then. I know that it was dumb of me, but I was actually really looking forward to this movie. I had you do seen love the trailer. John Cho. I, I love John Cho. I actually, I'm the the guy who enjoys Blumhouse's piles of shit. I really like Fantasy Island. I, I don't know how, because I know you're you're about to shit all over this movie for yeah. a great height. Um, <laughs> and I, I'm very keen to understand, because as you say, you you liked fucking Fantasy Island, which was yeah. a god awful piece I, of shit. I, I really John liked Joe's Night Swim. one of your fucking hall passes. Yep. <laughs> I really liked Night Swim earlier this year. I shit, even liked fucking gross. Tarot, which was really bad. This movie had nothing redeemed. I, I went into this, th- I expected it to be shit, but I was like, this is going to be fun shit. I thought I was in for the exact same thing that we got from Mig- Mithrigan. <laughs> I was going to say Meg Threen. Like, it's a genuinely right. good film. It was, it was. But, you know, a lot of that is in the fun it pokes at itself. And I, I really thought that that's what I was in for here. Noosk had seen the trailer with me. And, you know, our entire house is smart. I can, you know, turn everything on and off from I was anywhere thinking about world. you all the way through yeah. this. And so we were like, oh, this will be fun. Let's go see this and have a laugh together. Just honestly, this is one of the worst, not the worst movie of the year, which we're going to talk about in about five minutes. <laughs> but this movie absolutely stunk. There was nothing redeeming about this movie. The worst thing about it is, and Blumhouse keep doing this, They keep taking good ideas and just making them bad. Because I think the premise of this movie 
is okay. And there's some decent scenes here and stuff. I like the idea of, you know, the young girl and the the dickhead guy and the AI, how it, you know, disrupts that. Like, I, I like a lot of what this movie is wanting to do. It just doesn't do any of it effectively. And then in the final 10 minutes, falls completely to <laughs> shit. <laughs> did you feel the same way or did you like this? I've, I, look, I, I've seen the, all the reviews across the board and everyone. I mean, I, I think the big, highest score I saw of this is like one. <laughs> out of five. People are shitting on this thing. Look, the ending 100% lets it down. It's, it's really, the, the ending is not good. But... I'm going to say, the first two acts of this, I really liked. I, look, the truth is, I think I, I mostly I think agree. I think that you, a lot of it I did like. It, it's just wrapped up in stuff that's so bad that it soured I, I, my whole I, view. I, if, if the ending hadn't... It, it, leaving aside the last... And it's probably only like 10 minutes, maybe 15 tops. This would be like a seven, half, eight out of 10 for me, this movie. I really, really enjoyed it. I think the cast are all good. I think it um, White's manages to take a what by now is a fairly tired fucking trope. There have been in the last five years. I I personally have seen at least ten films about AI gone bad or smart houses gone bad. Oh, I mean the Chucky remake, even. <laughs> yeah, everything. I mean, it, the, the, there's obviously the creepy doll things, the Mithrigans and whatever. But I have seen at least three films in the last five years about smart houses turning against their yeah. owners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is not, this is well-trodden ground. And I think this film manages to still be, take, take new angles on things. I think it's a really, really well-written um, film about a family. I think each of the, but uh, both uh, Cho and uh, what's her name, Catherine Waterston, yeah, um, and the three kids, um, including um, Lakita Maxwell, who uh, have, you haven't watched Shrinking yet, have you? No, I haven't. No, uh, the, the the daughter in that, she is great, and that show is great. You need to watch it. Um, I think the, the 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 kids are all great. They all get their sort of individual person. None of them are two dimensional. I thought they each had a good arc and a good interaction. With yep, I, uh, I agree. And there. Each of yep. their act, each, each of their interactions, all five of them, is different and well thought out. And I really liked where they went with each of them, especially Lakita Maxwell's yep. um, arc. And it was unlike most of the films like this. It was completely believable to me that they all got on board with this thing rather than finding it creepy when it starts doing shit that you know Siri and Alexa just can't do. Yeah, because interacts with each of them at the, at their at their level and in their own way and i thought that was all really really well done and i mean yes the final act all the wheels fucking fall off and the ending's terrible everything it's really terrible. everything and falls it, apart it was so disappointing because i had enjoyed it so much up until then yeah it really falls apart so bad i agree with some of what you've said i think that a lot of the family stuff works. I still think a lot of it doesn't. I think the the middle boy who gets into swatting videos, I think that is fucking ridiculous. Um, I think that... I, I agree. I like that Catherine Waterston... I think you've forgotten the nasty shit we used to look up on the internet <laughs> when we were in our early teens. I think that was completely believable. I do really like the fact that Catherine Waterston Siri, actually you gets... Like <laughs> I do really like the idea that Catherine Waterston actually gets on board with Aya because I think in in most s film versions she wouldn't. Um, so I do like that we get that and then John, John Cho is the one who ends up becoming sceptical of it. Yeah. But I just think that it's all handled so poorly. It, like, it's not just the final reveal. The entire... Any time you try to look at any of the logic of how any of this is working, there is none. <laughs> like, as, as soon as the quantum computer is revealed to be made out of toilet rolls, that was one of my favorite scenes. I actually liked that. I, I liked. I, I liked that it was all smoke and mirrors. Yes, but, but I was expecting something was, to actually it, come from that. It, well, it, it it was bullshit that because because you then have no logical reason why this super AI exists. Yeah, because that's exactly right. Because it can't just have grown out of the internet. That's exactly right. A quantum exactly computer makes right. sense. The, one of the few quantum computers that has the, the processing power to be able to 
yeah. create this thing. That made sense. As soon as that was kind of smoke and mirrors and, oh, they all work for her. Yeah. Then it fell oh. apart because where did she come from? She, you know, it didn't spontaneously I mean, grow. And how the fuck is it giving commands and orders to regular people? They're not computers. Oh, how the, the, how, the, yeah, the how the fuck actions, is the AI? It, it, None it of it makes sense act, yeah. at all. It falls to such shit that no matter how much I liked individual scenes and segments from earlier in the film, it falls apart so hard that it just demolishes everything. Mm. I kept I expecting to, Havana Rose. Credit to the Lee. writing, though. When I just <laughs> quoted the the teenage boys saying Siri, do you like butt stuff? My phone just word for word says I don't know how to respond to that, which was exactly <laughs> what it said in the movie. Yeah. I I kept expecting that Havana Rose Lou was actually going to be revealed as the AI, like you know a robot or what, something. They scratch her face and it would all be metal underneath. <laughs> yeah, which honestly, like that's terrible, but it's a fuckload better than what it's we actually get the in the ending. movie. Yeah, that's true. That is and true. Even just like the little logical beats, like. The family before whose child is missing because the AI, I, I don't even fucking know. Why the fuck did they have an yeah, eye? Well, Where Ricky, did that yeah, even, Ricky, how did they Ricky get Lindholm it? Ricky and, uh, who, who, who played the husband? I can't, it, uh, doo -doo. it wasn't Zach Galifianakis, but it was fucking someone. Um, but yeah, Ricky Lindholm and, and whoever played the husband in that cold open where, which I thought was really good, um, where the the shadowy figures are coming in and, and the, the the RV people and all of the rest of it. Yeah. Um. I never understood no. why they bought into. I understand them having to do Aya's bidding because she's got their kid squirrelled away somewhere. No, but they and don't. They don't know that. They no, don't know that. They I, think it, that John it, Cho it, has their kid. Yes, I know. It would have. What I'm saying is, it would. I would have bought it. It would have made sense if they were unwitting, unwillingly, borns for Aya because she's got their kid. But why and did so they, they have to? But that's not what the movie no, gave us. No. The movie gave us them having drunk the Kool Aid and bought into this whole thing, which made no sense. No, and because we see her being, uh, that you know that. The house turns against her at the start of the film. She knows yes. that I is evil, yeah. so she wouldn't. Have, so yeah. My, I mean, my biggest flaw in logic: how? Did, why did those people even have an Aya? Like Aya is not a a released thing. Be, you know, the whole premise yeah. of the film is that John Cho is testing this thing. They're the only ones to have it. It's like a family. Well, that, no, like, no, no, no. It, it 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 is out there. He's testing it because they're. Um, so that he understands it, so that they can create a marketing campaign for it. It's been released. I didn't. I got they've the got vibe a room it full of. Yet. They've got a room full of people. You know, it's in beta release. They say something about it's in beta release. There's a new patch coming or something. Um, but it is out there, which is why they've got a room full of drones doing arm actions and oh, the arm actions. tech support what, or like, what whatever. The fuck is that? Yeah, oh it, it didn't make none of it. That, that, <laughs> none of that made sense. You're making me dislike this film, and I actually came out of it I, thinking it's a good film with a bad ending. I don't know how. I don't know how because honestly, everything that happens in that final kind of half hour fell apart so hard for me that it made me dislike even the scenes that I had moderately liked before. <laughs> I, I never thought it was a good movie, but I, like you, there were bits I was out of this film. And half an hour later went into a film that we're about to talk about. <laughs> and, and that tweaked my judge. But I, I've got to say, one thing you didn't have to do that I did is drive home in a fucking Tesla after watching that kid <laughs> have his car driven off a cliff. Tell you what, starting that thing up. <laughs> and then halfway home, someone swerved. And <laughs> as they do it, the car slammed its brakes on. Yeah. And I went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's the end. <laughs> yeah, I, I really wanted to like this movie so much, but in the end I just found so little to enjoy in it. I mean, John Cho is is always fun. Um but honestly See, this... I thought he was he, he was a little bit sleepwalky through this. Oh how compared could you not to, be <laughs> compared to um uh Searching, missing. Which was the one he was in? Missing. Searching. Uh, he was in searching. The first searching. one. Yeah. Missing was the better one. Um, yeah. Compared to that, where he was, I thought he was phenomenal. I thought he was kind of dozing through this. Uh, Catherine Waterstone, I thought was great. Lakita Maxwell was great. Um, I thought that the two boys were good. Um, 
but yeah, he 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 was fine, but a bit flat. So how are you scoring this out of ten? Does this get a pass from you? I'm going to give it. Yeah, I'm going to give it a flat five. <laughs> That is so generous. This is a it's three. Because more than half of this film, I was genuinely enjoying. I thought it was really good. Wow. One of the one of the better films of this ilk, and there, as, as we've said, there have been quite a few of, over the rec- over recent years, um, and it is better than most of them. And then, yeah, a- as we've said, all the wheels fall off in the last 20 minutes oh. or whatever, and it's, the ending is terrible, and there are holes. But most of the film... I was really enjoying. Like I said, the worst bit for me is that it's it's like squandered premise because I think the idea yeah. is there. And even within the film, there are some scenes and ideas that work. Like I said, my, fav- my two favourite scenes in the film were the opening titles, which was all just like the batshit AI. Oh, the fu- fucking, I forgot to mention. Fucking the fucking imagery. AI imagery was so well done. I thought that was really well done the, and the really scary solid. The dream, dream sequences yeah. and things. Through, and that opening I thought was fucking amazing. I thought that was great. And <laughs> yeah, the scene where he discovers that the supercomputer is just fucking alfoil covered toilet yeah. rolls. I was on board. I was like, oh, fuck yes. Here's the twist that I'm waiting for that's going to explain everything. And instead, it did the complete opposite because they uh, they understood yeah. that was a cool premise and then they just had nothing to back it up with. It's like the and AI... Then, then, there's a lot of stuff that... I'm sure the writers must have had a reason for, but it just didn't come through, whether there's stuff on the cutting room floor that we just didn't see. But when... Um, whatever her name is, kills David S. Malkian, which was a, co- a cool shock. I didn't see it coming. Yeah. But I don't understand how she was told to do it. Was she told yeah. well in advance? Yeah. On a that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I mean. They, weren't all, they didn't all have like ear things yeah. in. I, I, that's I what I mean. It. The implication that the AI was directly controlling people and talking to people directly, I did not understand that at all. Well, it, it brought to mind, I don't think you ever got to... The um, short TV series Mrs. Davis, which was about no. an AI that uh, is essentially kind of taken over the world and is controlling everyone through like sort of Bluetooth earpieces and yep. instructing people to do, you know, all sorts of different things. Um, and then there's a small group of rebels who are fighting against it. It made more sense in that because. Yep. The AI is everywhere and is helping everyone live their lives and everything. And the, the things, even the kind of more extreme things that it, it gets people to do, like kill someone or whatever, it's either built up over a long period of time so that they believe in what they're doing yeah. or, uh, uh, you know, as with Ricky Ling at home, you know, there's a kid being held hostage or whatever the case may be. But some of the people in this were just doing oh. extreme random shit yeah. seemingly because they'd just been told to with no other rationale. And it, it's like there was stuff missing. Like oh, the, yes. The original script had more I, meat on the bones. I did and, wonder that because this is a very short movie. <laughs> this, you yeah. know, it's like an hour 25 or something. I did wonder if there was a longer cut somewhere that might have made slightly more sense, but that doesn't... I, 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 that, it it could have been four hours. It wouldn't have fixed some That's of the right. issues. It doesn't. I, I think some me. of the logic lapses, yeah, are possibly because for some idiot editor cut stuff out that needed yeah. to be there. See, I'm a three out of ten at best. I can't go above Ooh. three. Just, but our uh, our pain this week does not end here because, <laughs> as as you said, we also got to the crow. Oh, yeah, we did. Uh, Which is a 2024 American gothic superhero film directed by Rupert Sanders from a screenplay by Zach Balin and William Schneider. It is a reboot of the Crow film series and the fifth film in the franchise overall. Second film after the 1994 film to adapt the original 1989 comic book series by James O'Barr. It stars Bill Skarsgård and FKA Twigs. I don't know if I'm saying that right because I'm not down with the the Gen Z. silly... Well, I... I'll chime in because I had to go and look this up because it's the silliest fucking name I've ever heard of. <laughs> um, apparently, 
um because she's uh, like a singer hip hop art whatever british musician more so than a, than an actor um apparently she had the nickname early on twigs because her joints crack really loudly which i think is kind of cool but she couldn't call herself twigs because there was some other artist called twigs <laughs> and so she added the uh f uh fka, F-K-A. yeah which which she claims is just random letters but everyone assumes is stands for formerly known as but uh, so, okay. so there's a reason for the I name. Actually, look, I actually don't hate that then. that's like, I really enjoy a yeah. twee band who used to be called Sports, and they had to change their name because, you know, they got sued. There was another band called Sports. So, sports, yeah. so they changed their name to Remember Sports, <laughs> which I think is really kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Blink are exactly the same. They were originally called Blank, Blink, and then they added the 182, which legend has it is the number of fucks in the film Scarface. Um, but... <laughs> Who knows if that's true. Go and Google that later, but um, (laughs) the number number sounds about right. (laughs) All right. So, look, just tell us then, what is The Crow about? Um, The graphic novel and original film or this piece of shit? (laughs) This piece of shit. Right. Okay. Well, this one uh, is about a guy called Eric who meets a chick called Shelly and then they get killed because Danny Houston is a soul-sucking demon or something and yeah. needs to sacrifice innocent people and she accidentally videoed him doing yeah. that or, or, or controlling her to do that and then... Eric uh, comes back because of the power of the crow and is uh, apparently if he kills the demon, then all of the innocent souls that went to hell come back to lives, like killing the head vampire or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. This has very little in common other than names and a blackbird with – the graphic novel, the graphic novel series, and the Alex Proyas film. Even the shit sequels have more in common with the graphic novel than this yep. film does. Yeah, honestly, I'm I'm gonna do this. Big Tizzle's big call. There will not be a worse film than this this year. I is that a big call? And I, no. I, I kind of feel you throwing that sound <laughs> drop around willy nilly now. Look, I don't care what else comes out this year. This is going to top my worst of the year list at the end of the year. <laughs> this was so fucking atrocious. I, it's bad. I, I love The Crow. I, I really, really love The Crow. Long-time listeners of the show will know that I only saw it for the first time within the life of the show. A patron made Topher and I watch it, I reckon, five, six years ago now. It was, I find it that was early kind of wild that it hit you as because it, it, it is so 90s. Yeah, but every, so am I, I mean, mate. I know, the, I, know, I know the cures on the soundtrack, but even yeah. so, it's it's so nineties. Yeah. Um, and I don't, don't get me wrong; I don't think it's aged badly. I think it's still as is Dark City. I think Proyas is a highly underrated director. Yeah, um, but you know what? I am so nineties. I, I am a, I am a nineties <laughs> golf kid. I'm all about flannel and fucking like. <laughs> I still remember as me and mates going to see this in the cinemas with our fucking. Stupid goth looks and our long black jackets <laughs> yeah, and yeah. fucking teased up hair and at least one of us was in leather pants and <laughs> yeah, but I th- I think the original Crow is brilliant and as you say the yeah. soundtrack cannot be beat the soundtrack oh. of this was fucking awful this uh, this is not even got like this film oh. felt like what a fourteen year old girl who has only ever watched the CW thinks that goth is like that's what this movie felt like it's like they have no idea what goth is but oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that they look like fucking joker out of fucking oh, suicide the, the, squad oh, there was and that's so goth. much jared leto about this oh. fucking eric graven design um yeah just terrible just Absolutely horrendous terrible. you know i i really i i gotta tell you I fucking don't like Bill Skarsgård. I don't think he's a good actor. I I don't understand well, see, the, the love for thing, him. I thought he was is, an awful Pennywise, and those movies were oh, shit. Wow. And I think he's oh awful. God. I think he's awful in this movie. I don't even think this is the kind of thing where you could say, oh, at least you know Bill Skarsgård carried it. Everyone is fucking awful in this movie, and he is the worst of the lot. <laughs> 
He's right. bad. I, I can't believe there is no charisma to this fucking guy. I don't get it. Like Not Eric, really. I- Eric is meant to be charismatic. <laughs> Like you meant to understand the, the big thing about the crow is the romance. Like, let's be real. Like, yes, yeah. it's a goth superhero film, but really, it's like a fucking tortured well, that's, love story. That's why one of the biggest problems with this is that he is bringing her back. Yes, the whole point is that it's this fucking tragic tale. Yes. where he it is he is just the embodiment of. of Tragedy, despair, and lost love, and yes, because if you if you know anything about the crow, and- Barr wrote it after <laughs> his wi- after his wife or fiance, I can't remember, was killed in a in a drunk driving wreck. Yeah, like yeah, that's that's the true story of the crow. It's that tragic, tortured, and all of that is lost and, here and, because and both the him the and fucker twigs feel, are insufferable. Yeah. I fucking all- hate both of them. All right, so I'm gonna because you're Negatron today. <laughs> I, I'm I am going to say I did enjoy the chemistry between the two of them. <clears throat> I think I think the the dialogue they were given and the the writing is is god awful. But I think they actually had a rather nice um, chemistry between them, uh, and there were a few nice little moments where they were sharing in jokes and doing little bits, just little bits and pieces and moments that I thought, you know what. The two of them are doing the as well as anyone can with this horrendous material. I, I like um, Skarsgård. Um, Twigs I've never seen before, but I thought she was fine. Um, she's obviously not nearly as much as him because she dies fairly early. Um, oh, not thought- early enough. <laughs> Sorry, not to, be, I, not to bring back I, Negatron. This movie's so <sighs> fucking long, man. The yeah, fact yeah, that yeah. it took like over an hour before you even get to, you know... It, the crow and all that shit, and I just did not give a shit about either of these people. They oh, were both was... just insufferable. Fu- I do- I wanted them both to die of a drug overdose before it- they got <laughs> fucking like honestly. <laughs> it made no. I mean, it made no sense to me that we spend the first twenty minutes or whatever the hell it is. Yes, before Skarsgård's even in it. Where yeah, Eric, following... Eric is Eric is not our main character for the first yep. third of this film. We're following her, which. Is, is weird. I mean, and um, that, that could work if it made you care about her to the point where you well, were upset that, when she I died. Was, I think that was the intention, but partly because we know she's going to die because it's not a new yeah. IP. That fails anyway, but... But the also, didn't earn that at all. No, and the addition of the supernatural villain in this... Which is oh, not fucking in, terrible. Not in the original story. Not you know, like you could argue, no. oh, the crow by nature is supernatural. It is, but it's not really. Like it's the the crow is supposed to be quite grounded. Yes, sure, he comes back to life and he's you know fucking got superpowers and shit. Yeah, sure, let's, let's ignore that. Tied. It, the, the bird. The birds are a a semi supernatural entity. Yeah, that is tied to. Death and grief and sorrow and revenge. You yes, know, it, but it's it's more of a Native American. Type yes, it's of supposed to feel more nature. kind of mythology to me, I guess, yes. rather than it, it, supernatural. It's not a. It's not. A, I mean, this this is very much portraying. Um, I can't remember what Danny Houston's character's name oh, was. Who cares? Vincent something. <laughs> uh, he is very much put forward as like this vampire slash demon yes. who is feeding souls to Satan so that yeah. he doesn't go to hell. Exactly. It's, it's, it's all kind of Christian mythology, which is so at odds with this yes. material. Yes. Um, this is, it, it is like someone who watched the Proyas film, never bothered to look at any of the source material and just went, oh yeah, cool. I like horror. I, I'm dead serious. This to me absolutely feels like a 14 year old girl who's only ever seen the CW <laughs> thinking this is what goth is because it all feels so neutered. Like, it, it really amazing. This is actually quite a violent film. We haven't even got there yet. But when you get to the violent scenes, they are quite graphic. And to be honest, well, the, the best scene in the film is that scene at the opera where he's just fucking killing people left, right, and center. He is. But, but it still feels it's neutered. Still, it was flat. Yes, it should, like it, it. Something that is that violent, and the like, all all you know, credit to the effects guys. The effects look, the the practical effects are really good. Yeah, but it was just boring. It, it this is. Movie, this is a boring, boring from film. Start to finish is tedious and yeah, boring. I'm not going and- to lie. I thought three times about leaving the cinema early 
And the only reason I didn't was for you, Dave, and for you, dear listeners, <laughs> because I thought, no, look, I, yes, I could look up Wikipedia and just fill in the blanks at the end. But honestly, three times in this movie, I genuinely almost stood up to leave because I it, it was just that bad. <laughs> I'm just I'm just looking because out of interest because I didn't get to it before. Zach Balin, who is the of the two credited screenwriters, he is the one that actually has a Wikipedia page. This is the guy he wrote the screenplays for King Richard, which he was Oscar nominated. Creed Three, Gran Turismo, um, that that current Bob Marley uh, biopic right. yeah. doco thing, thing, which is apparently quite good. Um, how the fuck yeah. is this the guy who wrote this shit? Yeah, that's bizarre to me. What I mean, this the movie, hell? this movie was in development hell for a long time. From memory, I think it was two thousand eight or something that they first said, "Yes, we are rebooting The Crow." And it's gone through a handful of directors and actors. I can't remember who the previous actor was who was tied to it. It was someone a lot better than Skarsgård. I'm sure of it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not that that's hard. Fact, I, in my opinion. I thought Skarsgård was okay. <laughs> um, I th- I thought that um, what's his name, Stephen Norrington or whatever his name is. I thought he was attached to do this at, at some point in time. Um. I don't remember who was attacked. I've got. I've got. A look oh, wait on! Now. Fucking Bradley Cooper. That's really? not. That's not even who I was thinking of. I'm sure that there was someone else at some point who was attached. That was Bradley Cooper was in talks to play the lead. So uh, Nick Cave was meant to write the script as well. Mark Wahlberg was offered the role. Oh, he's already destroyed one. <laughs> Dark noir franchise with Max Payne. We don't want him anymore. Um, there were rumors of Channing, Channing Tatum, Tatum, Ryan Gosling, Gosling, and James McAvoy. McAvoy, yeah. Jesus Christ! Well, obviously it's, they all it's, passed. It's been in it's been in development well, for a long ass time. Yeah. Um, Tom Hiddleston. Fuck it. Has anyone not been in? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Alexander Skarsgård was in talks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, okay. I, I, Luke I, Evans was actually cast in 2013. Every actor in fucking Hollywood's been attached to this. Norman Reedus was attached. Kristen Stewart, fucking hell! Wow. Yeah, that's wild. I, I just, I just thought that this movie was so. But my favorite. I don't know if you saw Breuer's talking about it, but he came out and said this is just a soulless cash grab, and then yeah. and then he came out after the opening weekend and said, and it seems like there was no cash to even grab because <laughs> this movie has done fucking nothing. Yeah, it's this a is going to disappear he, into he, oblivion. He, Alex didn't do himself any favors because he, he he sounded like before this came out, he sounded like such a whingy turd. Yeah. Um, and he could have just shut up and not said anything and this film would have done its own damage yeah. and he didn't yeah. need to make himself look like That's a dick. That's true. And we're, of course, um, allowed to call him Alex because he's Australian. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. yeah. I've loved him since Spirits of the Air, <laughs> Gremlins of the Clouds before anyone knew who the fuck he was. So, um, yeah, he's a, he's a very talented filmmaker who's made a lot of really good films. Well, a few really good films. Um, I, Robot was good. Yeah. Dark City's amazing. The Crow is amazing. Spirits of the Air, Grimms of the Clouds is amazing. Um, it's just a shame that at least for the next few years, when people say The Crow, this is the piece of shit they're going to think of first. Yeah, it made is- me. It made me want to just go rewatch the nineteen ninety four Crow because. It oh slaps. fuck! I would watch. I would watch the Edward Furlong sequel <laughs> over this, yeah. and that's a piece of shit. But if, um, if anyone out there three listening, of the sequels a piece of shit. But yeah, if anyone out there listening hasn't seen the original, it slaps. It's got oh. a, it's got an original Cure song on the soundtrack. <laughs> it's, it's got it's. I mean, it's got an amazing "My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult" song after the flesh. Oh, the whole soundtrack fucking, is amazing. It, I mean, it is. It's it's one of those. It's like Repo Man and a couple of others. It is famous for being one of the best put together soundtracks yeah. that perfectly matches the film. Yeah. That's one of the things I one of the most annoying things about this is it made me hate Boa to see by Enya, which I 
fucking love that <laughs> token track. And this this movie made me dislike it. Yeah. So honestly, the, uh, there is, like I said, this is absolutely going to be in my worst of the year list. We don't do halves on this show, and I, I don't think I can give a zero. So I'm going a one. It, it's nothing. There, absolutely no way I could give it anything higher than that. Look, I'm going to have to be like a one and a half out of ten just to be consistent with Letterboxd, which you can, uh, the lowest you can get is the equivalent of, of, of at least a one out of ten. Um, but it's, yeah, it's fucking bad. Do not go and see this film. Do not give it your money. Yeah. It'll be on streaming in about four and a half hours probably. Um, and don't watch it there either. It like to, even even in the comfort of your lounge room, I, this movie's just not worth your time. Put it's, it on when when you get to that point where it's like maybe sort of eleven o'clock and you're thinking I could go to bed now or maybe I just put something <laughs> on for a little bit. Put it on then because it'll send you to sleep and then yeah. you'll, you'll yeah. get it's it a nice, boring night. flat. Fuck yeah. it. Well, there you it's go. Fucking abysmal. Yeah. So continuing the trend of uh, movies from you know thirty years ago. Next week, don't you dare fucking tie this in with. What's going to be a good film? Next week, we will be getting to Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I have still not seen the original. I will watch it this week. So I reckon next week it'll be a, a double review. We'll do we'll do Beetlejuice and Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Um, look, my hopes aren't high, but... <laughs> Fuck off! Oh, my God. You're a terrible person. I know I am. <laughs> But thank you for joining us here at We Watched a Thing. If you did, in fact, join us, I'm I'm willing to bet that uh, based on how these movies are doing at the box office, this might be one of our lowest downloaded episodes in a long, long time. And look, I'll, let, let, I'll just throw this out there um, because our, the week after Beetlejuice, I think we're probably due for Speak No Evil and maybe Wild Which, Robot. Yeah, I'm so keen. When we're not going to be covering Harold and the Purple Crayon on the show, but as a public service announcement... Don't fucking go and see it because it is. It will be in my top ten worst of the year. Oh, you've seen it? It's a piece of shit. Oh, okay. Because I actually I put that on the schedule just very recently because I thought you had said you were keen for it. I was. It's Zach Levi. It's a cool yeah. premise. I thought it was going to be a good. I'm not even going to subject my kids. Okay. To it. All right. I'll take that off the schedule then. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, like if was a bad film, but there were a few moments that I enjoyed. Um, you can read, I mean, you can read my letterbox thing on Harold and the Purple Crown. It, it is not a good film. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining us here. And uh, you can find us at pottymouthradio.com. All of our links are there. Join the Facebook listener community and we will catch you next week. See ya.